Well, every few months or so, uh, climate activists will go through a phase where they are especially annoying and obnoxious. And of course, they're always annoying and obnoxious, but periodically they will decide to be even more annoying and obnoxious than usual. It works in cycles, like the phases of the moon. In fact, the cycle might even be tied to the phases of the moon, but that's a theory that will have to be fleshed out another time. The point is that right now we are going through one of the extra obnoxious periods. Here's their most recent stunt from Yahoo News. It says, A protester has been arrested after Just Stop Oil supporters threw orange paint over the headquarters of a climate skeptic think tank in central London. Climate activists from the campaign group attacked a building in Westminster used by the Global Warming Policy Foundation and disrupted traffic by sitting in the road. Some supporters also glued themselves to the road and others locked themselves together. Just Stop Oil has been demanding the government halt halt new oil and gas licenses and consents. It has been... um, Labeled a nuisance by many and has closed the Dartford Crossing, smeared chocolate cake over a waxwork of King Charles, and thrown various things, including mashed potato, over famous pieces of art in recent weeks. Now, we'll leave aside the phrase climate skeptic, uh, as I'm always uh, reminding you that there are no climate skeptics. Nobody is skeptical about the climate. Nobody is walking outside, looking up at the clouds and saying, hmm, I don't know about this. I'm skeptical. We all agree that the climate exists and that it changes and that those changes sometimes result in unfortunate weather events. The skepticism is related to the supposed causes of those changes and the proposed solutions for those changes. Indeed, the the greatest skepticism, at least my greatest skepticism as a skeptic, is directed at the notion that the weather is a problem that can be solved at all by anyone apart from God himself. But as I said, Leave all that to the side. We'll also choose not to linger on the fact that these climate activists are buying paint and throwing it around, even though paint is made from fossil fuels, which is a bit like a vegan activist purchasing 10 pounds of ground beef from the supermarket as an act of protest against the slaughter of cows. There seems to be a little bit of a disconnect here, a concept problem. But we can't expect these people to behave rationally. They are throwing a tantrum, and if I know anything about tantruming toddlers, and I know a lot about them, it's that rationality is well beyond their grasp, especially in the middle of the tantrum. The episode with the paint is just the latest in a series of stunts, stunts which often involve throwing different sorts of liquids onto different sorts of objects or gluing themselves onto things. Last week, climate activists glued themselves to the floor at the Porsche Museum. And uh, the staff at the museum did exactly what people should be doing in response to these sorts of things, what I've been advocating for, which is that they just close down for the night and they turn the lights off and the heat off and they, and they just went home and they left the activists glued to the floor. The activists then complained that they weren't provided food. They complained that they weren't given buckets so that they could go potty. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a bit like lighting yourself on fire and, and in protest and then complaining that nobody has a fire extinguisher on hand. These are really the sorts of preparations that you should probably be making yourself. Now, elsewhere, climate activists have um, blocked traffic. They've run onto the field during sporting events. And most notoriously, as mentioned in the article, they've thrown various food items onto priceless works of art. This has apparently led to... Um, some internal disputes among climate activists, as reported by Axios with this interesting headline. Headline is, climate activists divided on souping art. Souping. Yes, soup is a verb now. Um, Soup is something that you can do. Because, you know, there are no rules in the English language, as we have repeatedly discovered. The article says, quote, 18-year-old climate activist Elijah McKenzie Jackson campaign coordinator for Youth Climate Strike Movement, Fridays for Future International, told Axios in an email that history tells us civil protests like these are necessary for change. He says, quote, although I can recognize these acts of justice may seem outrageous to people, I challenge them to feel the outrage of destruction, death, and murder all Western governments and corporations are committing to our animals, our neighbors in the South, and our ecosystems wrote uh, Mackenzie Jackson. 15-year-old Genesis Butler, founder of global organization Youth Climate Save, echoed that sentiment, writing in an email to Axios that, quote, it's important for us all to make bold moves to raise awareness about the climate crisis. But then there's the other side. Some don't see putting fabled art at the heart of disruptive protests 
as an effective path to advancing climate action. Among those who spoke out against the Van Gogh soup stunt was climate scientist Michael Mann, who criticized the move, telling the Associated Press that people will draw negative associations with climate active advocacy. He's worried that they will draw those negative associations. I think it's a little bit too late for that. Researchers and journalists alike have also since argued that these kinds of viral activities don't mitigate climate polluting emissions. Science and policy do. Oh, well, it's good that researchers have made that determination. I would not have been able to figure that out otherwise. We needed researchers to tell us that throwing tomato soup on an old painting will not change the weather. That's what researchers are saying. I need to see the studies. I haven't read the studies for myself. I won't believe it. I need to see, show me the study that proves you can't change the temperature outside by throwing your food at a painting. But if soup will not alter the climate, maybe dancing will. After all, many primitive cultures have believed that dancing has some effect on the weather, and maybe they were onto something. These healthcare professionals seem to think so, so they performed a rendition of Staying Alive in pursuit of climate justice. Let's watch this. We all want to stay alive, they sing, though I'm not sure I do after hearing that. I'm having flashbacks now to COVID when the nurses wouldn't stop dancing and uh, which ultimately, you know, did, you know, COVID ended up being worse than the Black Plague as they predicted because the nurses were dancing so much. And back in the Black Plague, the healthcare professionals, they didn't, they didn't do as much dancing. I can only hope this doesn't become a trend again because of climate change. So what is this all about? Uh, Why are the climate activists having these tantrums, whether in musical form or not? Um, well, well, one thing we must always keep in mind is that nothing is or entirely organic on the left. There is money behind this current rash of activism, organizations funding it and pulling the strings. And that's especially true when you hear about, we, we heard in the Axios article about a 15-year-old who, who, who started an international organization. Um, it, it's uh, almost always the case that when you hear about it, it's just like when the kids in Virginia, the kids in Virginia were staging uh, walkouts in their schools all across the state because of, uh, uh, you know, policies that say that only boys, boys have to use the boys room and girls have to use the girls room. And then you find out that, well, no, this is all being organized by adults and by organizations with money. So the same thing goes here. But as for the grunts on the ground, you know, people that are out there actually gluing themselves to the floor or having food fights with art, art exhibits or whatever else. There's not one explanation that can suffice. For some of them, this is empty virtue signaling. They're hopping on a trend, uh, f- fishing for social media clout, etc. There's definitely a lot of that. And for some of them, the younger ones anyway, this is the youthful rebellious instinct searching for a cause. Young people naturally desire a cause to protest over, fight for or against, and uh, climate activism provides an outlet. It's, just a, it's a place to expend that energy. But underneath all of that, I think, there is also nihilism. This is the engine that drives most so-called climate activism. It's, it's really the message that they're sending when they destroy or attempt to destroy a priceless work of art, or when they block traffic, randomly interfering with people's ability to get to work and feed their families, and at the same time, creating more traffic congestion, which only causes more CO2 emissions, not less. What does that achieve? Well, nothing, of course. It is just destruction and obstruction for its own sake. It's a protest not really against climate change, but against life, against humanity. They are expressing their anger at a world that to them has no meaning. They're expressing their anger at the fact that that it has no meaning. 
You know, so some of these people, again, the younger ones especially, they really do believe that the world is coming to an end. They really believe it. Now, a lot of the, a lot of the older people, the adults, uh, the, the Hollywood celebrities that push this stuff and they're flying around in the private jets and Al Gore and, you know, we know about all the hypocrites behind this stuff. And, and they don't really believe it. They know better, but they're the ones who, who started this. They're the ones who are propagating the lie. The ones propagating the lie, they know that it's a lie. I mean, a lot of these kids don't know that. They've been told since they were children that the world's coming to an end because of this. The, uh, the fear tactics, the hysteria, that's all settled into their minds. But they also see no value in life and in the planet, which they believe is headed towards destruction. And this tension is what causes them to lash out like they do in the way that they do. I mean, think about it. That's why it's kind of, it's, it's interesting that they're going after paintings. You would think that uh, if you believed that the world was coming to an end and that we, we didn't have much time left, you would cherish beautiful art even more. You know, you would have more appreciation for the things that are beautiful in the world. But they don't, because underneath all this is nihilism. Lack of meaning, denial of meaning. That's what lies at the bottom of all left-wing causes. And this one is certainly no exception. And that'll do it for this portion of the show as we move over to the members block. Hope to see you there. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed.